here we are then guys, part two of today's section. So, um, previously made some dough, put it to proof. Now you put it to proof traditionally until it's about twice the size. Um, or it, you know, you, you, you're quite happy yet it's working and um, I, could, I can move forward on that. It's no kind of set thing. You know, if I give you a time, maybe about 20 minutes, but no, it's by no means you could say, actually, I just want to make the dough and get on and make my pizza straight away. People do that all the time. It's not a problem. I've just sort of left it to prove so you can see that the dough is working. So what I've done is got it in this bowl here and what I'd like to do is pull it back here and hopefully you can see these little bubbles that are appearing at the bottom here. And these little bubbles are great because that is the yeast working. So we know the yeast is working, we know that this dough is rising and things are going well. So what I'm going to do, turn that dough out on the table. A little bit of a knead. This is um, uh, what they call knockback here. And what we're going to do here is just knock that air out of there. Remember I said earlier about the, the yeast goes a bit crazy on the first prove and ah, it's all over the place. And now what I'm doing is knocking that air out. I'm not going too crazy. I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to knead it so it's, it's going over the top. And that's it. And that's ready to rock and roll with that. Nice pizza base. Dead easy. Chop that in half. I'm going to do this into a couple of different things. Pop that back in there. I'll come back to that in a minute. And what I'm going to do, make sure I've got a nice wet cloth over that. Okay. Leave that some, somewhere warm. Come back to that and do something else with that. Then I've got this bad boy here, okay. So, at this point, I'm gonna do a pizza with this. Um, could do bread rolls, but it could do anything with it, you know? But that's what I'm gonna do here today. So, and I've got these really nice little pizza trays. At home I've got a pizza stone. I don't know if you guys have ever seen pizza stones. They're really good, because you pop them in the oven, get them nice and hot, when you get your pizza made up, pop it onto your pizza stone, back in your oven, and job's done. So, but here we've got these nice pizza trays here. I haven't got this, it's not a problem. You can use just a flat, flat regular tray, it's not a problem. Don't go buying anything special for this. So, just roll this out on our table. Start off with a round. Usually you end with a round. All right. If you start off with something that looks maybe like, I don't know, a small African country or the Isle of Wight, you'll end up with just a larger version of the Isle of Wight or a small African country. So start with a round one and you'll end with a round one. Oh, but chef, I want to do a square pizza. Well, good luck. Okay, a little bit of flour on the table there, it's just stopping me sticking. And you notice like when we're doing pastry, it's roll it, turn it, roll it, turn it, roll it, turn it. Don't leave it in one place too long. Keep turning it over. If I'm ending up with something that looks like an egg, then I'll turn it the other way. Keep going like that. Looking good. So, now whether you're a thick crust or a thin crust is entirely up to you. I don't like them too thick or too doughy, personally, but that's just me. So when you get to a point where you think, yeah, that's all right, I kind of like that thickness, remember, and of course, it's probably, it's gonna double up from this. I think that's cool. I'm going to go for that bad boy. Can you throw it in the air like they do in Italy? No. Especially on camera. Right? <laughs> it's like when you're doing things and you've got students in front of you and it's, you've got doing crepes or pancakes on the... And everybody's like, oh yeah, go on, throw it up in the air. And Flip it. It's like, no. Right? <laughs> if I'm at home and I don't mind making a fool of myself, good luck. Go, go for it. Enjoy but I know what will happen if I try and do it here and there. 
Might get pizza dough on your head. Just yeah. Have a new hat. Right, there we go. Pop that bad boy to one side. Don't put it anywhere cold, leave it somewhere nice and warm, okay? What I'm gonna do now is make up a bit of pizza topping. And I mean, I can't tell you how easy this is, okay? If I was doing like a really kind of posh one and um, maybe I was in a restaurant or something like that and I was cooking in a restaurant, um, I would make a slightly different sort of um, pizza topping. I would probably be frying off some onions and some um, garlic and some fresh basil and um, I'd be adding that to this mixture, okay? But I'm not asking you to do all that sort of stuff. What I've got here is passata. Now this is basically, what they've got is they've got tin tomatoes and they've put them into a blender and blended them down. So if you can't get this, just get a tin of tomatoes, put them in a blender, blend them down. If you don't want to put them in a blender, put them into a bowl and crush them down. Okay, that's all this is, all right? They just um, have found a nice little market where they can make this thing now called passata because people might use it, they might be making their um, remember a couple of weeks ago we did a sauce, we did the ratatouille sauce. Um, people like that, make, you know, people making um, stuff like that at home, so you could use that. So, a bit of passata in there. I only got one little pizza, I'm not going to go too crazy on this. Bit of tomato puree. Tomato puree is just going in there, give it a little bit more richness, a bit more concentration of flavours. You know? It's not about the quantity, it's about the flavours. That's really important. Remember I said to you earlier about having that pizza back in Naples. It wasn't about everything they put on top of it. It was about the few ingredients that were there, but the flavours that they gave off. And you don't forget those flavours. Now, Miss has given me some nice mixed herbs here. Oregano, or oregano as my wife calls it, whatever. You say tomato, I say tomato. Or is it the other way round? Bit of oregano, love oregano. It's a very bright herb and um, I've got some dried basil here, which is, you know, gonna have to do with it, but fresh basil, lovely. Okay. If you haven't got those, don't worry about it, it's fine. I've got a few mixed herbs here, but you know, I think I've got enough in there, so I'm gonna just leave it at those two bad boys. Pinch of salt in there. Okay, um, pepper of course. You know what chef's like, put your pepper in there. A bit of black pepper. And then because these tomatoes, you never ripen these tomatoes very well before they make them into passatas or put them into tin tomatoes. They never leave them in the sun and really ripen up. What I do is just a little bit of sugar in there, all right, to compensate for that, to take the acidity of the tomatoes away, just, just to make sure it's nice and sweet. Mix that around. And this you could make up, and if you didn't use all of it today, it'll keep in the fridge, it keeps for ages in the fridge. So if you want to make pizzas again on another day or something else, italian -y, away you go. Okay, so that's good. So that's all cool. That's going to go on there. Again, don't put too much on. It's not about the quantity here, it's about the flavours. If you put too much on, it just boils up over the side, goes all over the place, okay? So that's plenty on there. Okay. Now, toppings. Loads of different toppings. And this has sorted me out with all sorts of things over here, which is amazing. Garlic there, look, found some garlic. Just found some garlic, that's it then. We're all set, okay? Let's pop a little bit of pepper on there. Why not? Now, the thing is here, we've got to that point where there's two different trains of thought, and it's entirely up to you because you're the one making the pizza. Do you put the topping on now and then put the cheese on? Or do you put the cheese on now and then put the topping on? Mm. Or shall I put a bit of cheese on now 
put some topping on and a bit of cheese over the top of that. I think I'm going to go for that Mrs. Yes. All right. Double cheese all the way. Double cheese all the way. Okay, so I'm going to do that one. Dicing these, you can slice them, you can do what you like in terms of these. Obviously, the, the, it's not going to be in there cooking for that long. All right, it's going to be in the oven for what 12 to 14 minutes. So if you cut it too big, what will happen is it's not enough time in the oven, okay, and then it won't cook. So cut it a bit smaller, cooks quicker, and away you go. Mushroom. mushroom there. I, I won't, I tr I'm really trying not to do my mushroom jokes again but it's really difficult. You get a mushroom and it's like oh man I've got to do my mushroom jokes. But then you know that's the sort of fun guy I am. Right there we go. Mushroom jobs are goody. Onion I don't know I'm, I'm not gonna put any onion on it today but why not? Oh miss, I didn't put any cheese on there before I put, let's put a bit of cheese on before I put anything else on. I know, look at that. There we go, a bit of cheese on there, lovely. I'm just using a regular cheddar cheese here. If you've got some mozzarella, fantastic. And I've got some um, Parmesan here. Uh, this is a Gran Padano that we've got here. Uh, Gran Padano is really nice. Gran Padano is um, basically when they have an excess of milk um, when they're milking the cows, they'll make Gran Padano out of it and not a full um, uh, uh, Parmesan cheese. Um, um, so Gran Padano is not as strong as, as a Parmesan. Um, it's not ripened for so long. It's, it's a quick Parmesan. Um, it's something they, they don't let it set for the full amount of time. But hey, still nice. Bit of garlic. Shall I put a bit of garlic on there, miss? Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of it. Cut the root end off as normal. Knife, crush, peel comes away. Dead easy. I'm going to chop that a little bit. And just go into sprinkle a little bit of garlic on there. Beautiful. Now, this is also bought me today. Spoiling me today. Some different sausages. So I've got here some kind of slimy looking sausage, and we'll just put that on maybe as it is there. Keep it whole like that. I won't put this ham on there, I don't think, because I think that might. Oh, I don't know. Let's go for it. Let's live dangerously, shall we, miss? Mm hmm. Put a bit of this like, Parma ham on there as well. So it's quite meaty this one, it doesn't have to be meaty if you want to do just a vegetarian one, fish one, um, you could do that, um, you know you can put different things on there, ham on there. Now one thing though, if you put pineapple on your pizza, just don't tell me alright, because you know, you will go from here on my Christmas card list, probably you might drop a little bit on my Christmas card list if you tell me that you put pineapple on your pizza. But, you know, it's cool. Tomatoes, you know, each to their own. Tomatoes, I might put some tomatoes on there as well. And then, let's go for a little bit of this Parmesan on there. A little bit more cheese. And I did see as well, Miss had some um, sweet corn over there as well. Yeah, hey, why not? Whatever you got. Mainly for colour, I think, this one. Okay, good. So I'm going to pop that in the oven. Now the oven, I've set it pretty high into, I think we're talking about 220, 230. You know, really hot oven. And that's going to go in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. But what I might do, I might just leave it for about five or ten minutes here where it's a little bit warm to let that dough rise a little bit more before I pop it in the oven and then what I'm going to do obviously um, on the next section is bring it out the oven and show you what it looks like and go 
go from there. We'll put, take some pictures and put it onto the site as well. Okay? So pizza, how easy is that? I mean, literally, nothing at all into that one. Um, but have fun. Put on there what you want to put. It's, it's not, you know, you don't have to follow all these fancy Italian ones. Just enjoy it. Okay, so I'll come back to you in part three, and we'll go through the calzone, dead easy again, and talk to you about what needs to be done on that. Thank you guys. See you soon. Take care. Boom.